Some of you may not know that I think the second Catholic bishop that I ever met in my whole life was McCarrick. I was an Anglican priest. I was convicted about the truth of the Catholic faith, and I was coming into the Catholic Church. And a dear friend of mine said, I know someone who can help you, young Father Marshall, the Anglican. I'm going to make a meeting between you and Cardinal McCarrick. And so I met Cardinal McCarrick. I've shaken his hand. I've looked him in the eyes. I've had a conversation. At the time, um, my impression of him, I knew nothing because I was not a Catholic. I didn't know any of the rumors or stories about McCarrick. Certainly none of the horrible, horrible things that we know now. My impression of him was that he was sort of a jolly man. He had a twinkle in his eye. He looked you in the eyes. He was very friendly and very likable. And I remember leaving the meeting with a very good impression. And he said to me, the young Taylor Marshall, that he would love to see me ordained as a Catholic priest, even though I'm married, but I was an Anglican priest before. So there's what's called, they used to call it the pastoral provision. I would enter into the pastoral provision for the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C., and become a Catholic priest. Can you imagine if I had become a Catholic priest in the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C.? My, how things have changed. Uh, he said he would like to see that happen, but he was on the way out, and Cardinal, or then Archbishop Worrell, was on the way in. Um, but he would recommend me and, and maybe get that going. That was my meeting long ago. How long ago was that? I think it was 2006, so it was a long time ago. And here we are in 2021, looking at one of the greatest monsters in the history of Christianity. Absolutely disgusting. The number of lives destroyed, the amount of money embezzled, the amount of uh, people losing their faith, losing their trust in the church, um, the appointments that McCarrick made as a kingmaker in D.C., the bad political deals that were done with presidents, vice presidents, congressmen, all kinds of things that go on in D.C. under McCarrick. It's a legacy that will continue to burn on even after this man dies and goes to his reward. You know, not repentant of the abuse that you've done. So the woman here says, you are not repentant of the abuse you have done. And other people, not in this clip, are saying, how many lives destroyed? How many children, you prince of the church, now we often call cardinals princes of the church, um, mocking him. It's a very sad story, and McCarrick reveals the infiltration in the church. Remember, McCarrick was not just a monsignor somewhere in Ohio or Wyoming. McCarrick went from nothing his mother was a widow. He lost his father as a young man. I detail the entire life story as much as we know in Infiltration. You'll see that he went from nothing, barely had any pastoral assignments, and he just went from father, monsignor, bishop, archbishop, cardinal, which is boop, 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 right up the staircase. The abuse of McCarrick is not just somewhere, you know, far away, you know, at a, at a truck stop or a casino. It's in, he does abuse in the context of the liturgy and the sacraments and the ritual of the church. This is what is so disgusting and evil about it. It is satanic. It is a subversion and an inversion of the sacred. Our Lord Jesus Christ the master, the second person of the Trinity, the incarnate word said this in Matthew 18. Quote, But he that shall scandalize one of these little ones that believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone should be hanged about his neck and that he should be drowned in the depths of the sea. End quote. Yeah, but Taylor, we're like uh, Vatican II Catholics now. We don't believe in all that like mean God stuff. And it's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. He who died on the cross for every sin. Christ died for every sin committed. But for McCarrick to receive the blood of the atonement and redemption and forgiveness of sins, he must do 
penance. He must repent. God doesn't justify us and save us against our will. We're going to need a bigger millstone. No one deserves that abuse. And the fact that the abuse is rooted and planted into the sacred, into Christmas, into confession, into the mass, into the priesthood, in, into the college of cardinals, disgusts me. You know, McCarrick and Bergoglio, Francis, were made cardinal on the same day by John Paul II. Do you know that? February 22nd, 2001, John Paul II made Bergoglio and McCarrick on the same day made them cardinals. That day will go down in infamy. I'll tell you that much. If you want to be theological, the infiltration's been going on before the creation of man. When Satan said, I will not serve, and denied God, and he himself became a devil, and he led a third of the angels to fall and become devils. And then he infiltrated the garden, and he got Eve to sin. And then Eve got Adam to sin. And if you read the Old Testament, there's a constant infiltration. There's something good going on, and then evil worms in and seeks to destroy it. And then God has to redeem it. You see that with Christ. He institutes the Eucharist, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and Judas betrays him. He leaves early, and he shows up later in the garden, in the garden, and he kisses our Lord in the cheek. Do you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And then in the history of the church, there's been the heretics. There's been the Gnostics. There was the arch-heretic Arius. And then there was, let's see if I can get them all, there was Nestorius and Eutyches, the Byzantine emperors who were against, believe it or not, against the icons and the images. Martin Luther. You know, all these heresies, Arianism and Nestorianism and the Monophysite heresy and the Iconoclastic heresy and the Reformation, they were led by clergy, by priests and bishops. And this is why I make this podcast, because I want to call you as just a guy, a dad with a webcam over his garage in this room right here. We need an army of people who prayerfully, through a life of sanctity, regain the church. So the lay people out there watching this, if you're like me, totally disgusted by McCarrick. You have to realize that an evil culture infiltrated the church of sex magic and satanic ritual abuse. And McCarrick sowed bad seed in the field. You know, the wheat and the tares, he was out there for decades sowing the tares. You know, McCarrick is on camera saying that he went and campaigned for Bergoglio to become Pope. Bergoglio was the number one draft pick of McCarrick. <laughs>